Section 3.4 is titled Solving Problems Using Acute Triangles. So we're not really learning anything new in this section, we're just applying all the stuff that we learned in the previous sections. So let's just take a look at an example problem. Brendan and Diana plan to climb the cliff at Dry Island Buffalo Jump, Alberta. They need to know the height of the climb before they start. Brendan stands at point B as shown in the diagram. He uses a clinometer to determine angle A, B, C. The angle of elevation to the top of the cliff. That's 76 degrees. Then he estimates angle C, B, D. The angle between the base of the cliff, himself and Diana. And he estimates that to be 60 degrees. Diana estimates angle C, D, B. The angle between the base of the cliff, herself and Brendan to be 50 degrees. Determine the height of the cliff. The height of the cliff to the nearest meter. Alright, well if we take a look at this diagram that is so fantastic. Um, you can see that we have one right angle triangle and one acute angle triangle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for this angle right here just to see what it is. So I know the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees, so that angle will be given by 180 minus 50 minus 60, which works out to 70 degrees. Yes. Okay. So I know now that this is 70 degrees, so I'm going to write it in. That is 70 degrees. Okay. So now I know what this angle is, and I need to find this side. I can do that now because then now I know what angle C is, 70, and I know the side opposite to it. So I know that I can use the sine law. So I'm going to set up my sine law. So BC, that side, over sine. D, right, because it's opposite of BC, is equal to BD, BD, over sine C. Now I'm going to plug in what I know. So I know I'm trying to find BC. So BC over sine 50 is equal to 60 over the sine of 70 degrees. Okay. So now I need to try to solve for BC. So to do that, I'm going to cross multiply. So BC times sine 70 is equal to 60 times sine 50 degrees. So now I can divide by sine 70 on both sides. to get that BC is equal to 60 times sine 50 all over sine of 70 degrees. I can plug that into my calculator and I end up getting that segment BC is equal to 48.912 with a lot of decimals. Okay. So now I know that this is 48.912. That's this side length. But I know that this is a right angle. So now, in order to find the height, I can just use 10, because I know this angle. So I'm trying to find the opposite, and I know the adjacent. So I know that I can use 10. So 10, 76 degrees, right? Because that was that was this angle right here. 10 of 76 degrees is equal to my height, h, over my side length that I just found, 48.912. And then I can cross multiply, get that h is equal to 10 of 76 degrees times 48.912. Plug that into my calculator. 
I get that H is 196-ish meters. So my height of my cliff is about 196 meters. That's an example problem for this section. So just remember that you're going to be using your primary ratios, the sine law, and the cosine law for, for these questions. So in summary, this summary box is really uh, great. You should probably take a look at it. It's on page 146 of your textbook. In summary, the sine law, the cosine law, and the primary trig ratios, and the sum of angles in a triangle may all be useful when solving problems that can be modeled using acute triangles. The need to know. To decide whether you need to use the sine law or the cosine law, consider the information given about the triangle and the measurement to be determined. So use this chart to figure out which law you need to use, whether it be the sine law or the cosine law. Drawing a clearly labeled diagram makes it easier to select a strategy for solving a problem.